goodness. Oh, can't you just taste it? Can't you just? I know a lot of people that watch us on Wednesday night say, Arlena, go to bed every Wednesday night, so hungry. Well, this will do it to you. Look at this corn. This is what they call bread and butter because it's the, the bread is the white and the butter is, oh, look at this corn. Delicious homegrown corn. Ah, what more could you want, right? Well, that's what today's At Home is all about. We're so glad that you joined us. We're gonna talk about corn uh, fresh from the garden and we're gonna give you a lot of recipes on what to do with it. I know that um, come the middle of January, we'd all wish we had some of that corn. And we were just talking about how interesting it is in some families, it seemed like if you were born and raised in the country, kind of in a rural setting, that when you had corn for supper, that's what you had, you had corn. You didn't have corn and potatoes and meat and it's not a side dish, you had corn. Sandy, the girl that works with me, she said, her husband says, let's have corn. He means he wants four, five, six years of corn for supper that night. And Steve, who's up there in the booth directing all of this, says that's the same thing. In fact, this past weekend, his family had corn and, and probably ate like several dozen. I'm not going to say how many, Steve, because I know it would be embarrassing. But anyway, corn, when it's in season, there's nothing better. Whether it's your silver, six dozen, six with two people. No, no there's more than two. No, seriously, um, when it's in season and you can get fresh Silver Queen, Silverada, bread and butter. I've heard um, salt, they call some salt and pepper. I mean, all different brand names of it. Whatever kind that you enjoy, just eat as much as you can. It's good. And even take it off the cob, you know, and, and put in those uh, seal packs and stick it in the freezer. We've enjoyed that all winter long this year. Never did that before. I did it last year. So today we're going to be we're going to be talking about corn, how to make a good corn pudding, how to make some corn relish, and that's not all. A, a Mexican and rice dish with corn in it, that is a main course for your dinner table. We'll be right back in just a minute. But first, here's today's at home hint. today's at home hint. Purchase corn with moist green husks, golden silk, and plump juicy kernels covering the ear in tight even rows. To store, refrigerate in the husks in a plastic bag. If you have an at home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Oh, if you could see with the camera what goes on in these breaks, you would not believe it. People are flying, tables are flying, and cameras are flying. I, I, someday we're going to turn the camera on. It would be wonderful. Well, the first uh, meal that we're going to be preparing, the first dish is called Mexican chicken and rice. And we have about a tablespoon of oil in a nonstick fry pan. And we're going to add about a pound, I'm sorry, yeah, a tablespoon of oil. We're gonna add about a pound of skinless, boneless chicken breast that we've cut up with the scissors, small little pieces, so that it cooks quickly. And we're just gonna add that to the skillet. And this has to cook, this is gonna cook in two segments. So while we're having this cook up real good, we're going to be starting another dish. So I just want you to, to talk you through this. This is, like I said, a pound of chicken. And it's just in a little bit of oil. And this needs to cook through. We're gonna add a small onion that has been chopped, finely chopped. Let's add that to it to give some flavor to that chicken. And a small green pepper, finely chopped. Now that's gonna add a lot of good um, flavor to the chicken to get it going already. You want to do this over really high heat because if you cook it at high heat, it'll sear, sear the juices into the chicken pieces and it won't be dried out. If you've ever tasted some chicken that tasted dry, you didn't like it? I know, that's because it cooked at a low heat for a long period of time. Like I said, this is on a high heat and you can see very quickly it's, it's cooking. It's not going to take long for this at all. While we're letting that cook, Make sure it's all in a single layer across the bottom of the skillet because if it's mounded up, then that part will not cook. And, 
I think we're doing real good there. We'll give that a turn every once in a while. While we're doing that, I want to start on the second recipe, which is our, it's called delicious corn relish. And you know that we would have all kind of corn coming out of the garden now. We've taken eight ears of corn and we've cooked it in boiling water just for five minutes. And then we took it out of the boiling water and plunged it into ice water to stop the cooking process. And that's what we've got here. These have been cooked five minutes and then dropped into ice water until they are totally cooled. Now I'm gonna show you a secret. We wanna cut the kernels off of this ear of corn. Here's my secret. I take my angel food cake pan. These first couple little kernels at the bottom, I'm just gonna cut those off just regularly, just like this. Okay, until I've gone the whole way around the cob. Now, one of the worst things about corn, when you go to cut it off the cob, it goes everywhere. Now we take this and plunge it into the top of our angel food cake pan. Now look here. It cuts straight off, and where does it land? Right in the pan, no more corns flying everywhere, all over the counter, all over the kitchen, all over the floor. I hate it when it's on the floor. Anyway, then you can just cut it off, get it off the every, look at that, isn't that neat? And the other thing, the thing I like mostly is it's very safe. Sometimes when you're putting it on a, on a smooth surface like your counter and it shifts and you cut, you could cut your finger. Can't happen this way. Then, I've got some more to cut here, just a minute. There we are. Then you just take your knife, go backwards, and look at all the good milk and the kernels that come out of that corn. And that's the way you do it. You do that with all of the ears, and of course you discard the cob. But this is, this is seven ears, and I'm gonna put this last bunch of corn in there. All right, that's eight ears of corn. Use whatever kind that you particularly want to use. That's up to you, all right? Now, we're gonna add to this corn, we're gonna add a medium white onion, just like that, and a small sweet red pepper chopped, like that, and a green pepper chopped, just like that, and one rib of celery, that's just like one piece of celery. Sandy was amazed that we called it a rib, she didn't know that, so we're educating all along the way here, everybody's learning together. And what I'm gonna do is just mix the corn, peppers, celery, and onion together, just like that. Let me take a quick look at my chicken. Boy, it's cooking fast and it's looking good. Not quite there yet, but we're gonna give it a stir. It's browning nicely. All right, now what we do, we set that aside and we're going to make the pickling part of the corn relish. In this large container, and you need a Dutch oven sized pan, you're going to put one and a half cups of distilled vinegar. This is the white vinegar. And one and a fourth cups of sugar. All right. And an eighth of a teaspoon of a cup of pickling or kosher salt. It's different than regular table salt. You, you buy it in a bag, it's not expensive, but that's an eighth of a cup. One tablespoon of mustard seed. Three fourths of a teaspoon of celery seed. Dry mustard, half a teaspoon. And a fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric. That's what this is. All right, we're gonna put all of that together and mix it well until the sugar dissolves, just like this. Mix it around until it dissolves very, very well. Now we'll add the vegetables that we have in this pan into, into in, from the bowl to the pan. There's the corn, peppers, onions, and celery. Corn relish is good because it's a nice accompaniment. If you don't wanna put pickles out and you're having pork chops or you're having whatever, beef or whatever, it's just nice to have corn relish to go along with it. Now, we're gonna put this on a medium high heat and we're gonna let this come to a boil to cook and we're gonna cook this for 15 minutes. See the nice color you get with the red, green, and the yellow and the white? Really nice. All right, this is gonna come back on our back burner here. And we're gonna put that on and get it going. Remember, 15 minutes that has to cook, all right? All right, back to the chicken. Looks like we're doing good. Now I'm gonna lower my heat here just a bit. And now we're going to add, this is corn. You can use cooked corn that you may have left over from cooking corn just like we've taken off the cob for dinner or you can use a bag of frozen corn 
This is a 10 ounce, this is 10 ounces of corn. And if you're using frozen corn, you'll want to thaw it first. Really important to thaw it first, okay? Just like that. And let's see, what else we're gonna add? We're gonna add some chicken broth. I believe it's one cup of chicken broth. All right. And the magic ingredient, which is a cup of salsa. Now, if your family likes hot, go hot. If they like mild, go mild. This happens to be mild. And uh, we're gonna add that right in with the chicken and the corn. Smells wonderful, I wish you were here. Love to smell foods that are cooking in the kitchen, just to whet your appetite. Now, after we do that, we have to bring this to a boil. And it's getting there quickly, it was, particularly if you have that corn thawed. If you have it frozen, it's gonna take a lot longer. You don't wanna do this with frozen corn. You want to do this with thawed corn. This will come to a boil. Then we're gonna add some minute instant rice because this is a complete meal in one dish. Don't you like these? Instead of making this and making this and making this, make it all at one time together. I think so too. All right, when this comes to a boil, then we're gonna add our rice and we're gonna cover it and let it cook, remove it from the heat, sorry. Cover it, remove it from the heat and let it stand five minutes and you're done. When you're ready to serve it, we're gonna add some cheese on top. That's your Mexican and chicken and rice. I think it's gonna be good. We're gonna take a break when we come right back. We've got some more good things to tell you about, about corn. We'll be right back. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we're doing a program today about corn, all kinds of corn. We're, uh, we've got our corn relish ready to go here. It still has not uh, come up to a full boil, but 15 minutes, that's gonna be done. And this is our Mexican chicken and rice dish. You can see it is up to the boil now. We're going to add one and a half cups of minute, the instant minute rice, like that, and stir it around. Remove it from the heat, shut the fire off, as they say. Stir it around. There's enough moisture in there to cook and to fluff that rice. And once it gets mixed, we're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let it set for five minutes, just like that. Mm -mm, can't you, I, I wish you could taste it. Tastes, smells so good, I know it's gonna taste good. All right, now we have the relish, it's still cooking. We're going to town there. And we're gonna show you another recipe. This is for a corn pudding casserole. Our family really likes corn pudding. It's like uh, something that's been a tradition. Every Christmas Eve you had a corn pudding. Every get together at my in-laws house, at Paul's family's house, there was a corn pudding. And there was always a running joke because it, the big question is, well, did it set up or didn't it? Because sometimes it was a corn pudding, but it looked more like creamy corn because it came out, it had not set. This one I think is gonna be a surprise to you because it sets right up and it's so easy. All right, first of all, what I've done here, um, I have taken a half a cup of chopped onion and a half a cup of green pepper. And I put a stick of butter here and we cook this for five minutes. And this is what you'll get when you're done cooking it for five minutes. Put that in your bowl. Make sure you get it all out because that's butter is important to the recipe. All right. Sometimes you get something and you've tasted it. You made it one way. You've made it one time and it was just so good and you tried it again and then it didn't taste bad. Well, sometimes you leave some of the ingredients in the pan and it really does have an effect on, on what you're preparing. All right, now what we're going to do is add a can of cream style. You see the cream style corn? That's thickened corn. That's cream style corn. Put the whole 16 ounce can right there. Now we're adding a can of whole kernel. Don't drain it, leave the liquid. See the liquid? Put it right in there. That's whole kernel corn. That's the difference. Mom used to make cream style corn and fried potatoes. Oh, haven't lived. And that's one of those, what to have for supper when you don't have anything ready? That's what mom would do. All right, then we're going to add three eggs beaten. 
And a fork does that just as good as anything else. Just beat them up, just like that. Put that in. All right, again, we're going to scrape the bowls. All right, now we have salt and pepper to taste. I like to just do enough salt to give it some, some flavor and then at the table people can add it. And then we're gonna do fresh cracked pepper. And I like pepper so we're gonna put a good bit in here. All right. And then the last ingredient is gonna be a package of Jiffy corn muffin mix. No flour, no nothing leavening, just this dry right out of the box. Just like that. And now we mix, and we mix it well. Get this out of the way, All right? Remember on the corn relish, we have to be sure that that cooks 15 minutes, and then what you'll do is, like you can any other, um, anything else that you're putting up, you follow the directions for canning on the jars. Like the, the, the company that you buy the jars from, it will tell you exactly how you're supposed to do. You always sterilize your jars and the lids and the caps and follow those directions. And then you process that, that uh, corn relish in a hot, what they call a hot water bath for 15 minutes. And basically what that is, is allowing the water to be, hot water to be one inch above the jars that you've submerged in the boiling water in a large kettle. And then from the time it boils, start timing at 15 minutes. And when you bring it out, set it to cool and you have the most delicious corn relish that you would ever want to taste. I think you're gonna enjoy this corn pudding too. I tell you, this is a whole lot easier than beating those eggs and beating the egg whites and folding them in and doing this and that. I've made those and they just, I don't always have good success. So this is a, this is a treasured recipe and I think you're gonna enjoy it. It's a great accompaniment for whatever. It's a great accompaniment for chicken, for uh, beef, for anything if, as long as corn is appropriate with it. This is going into a preheated 350 degree oven and we're gonna bake it for 30 to 40 minutes. I would set the timer at 30 and then we'll just do that. And then check it after 30 minutes and then give it the extra 10 if you need it. All right, let's take a look now at our corn relish. You can smell the, the peppers coming off of it and uh, the pickling, you know, we put some vinegar in there. You can just smell that, oh my goodness. I want you to see this. Hope you can see the colors. Isn't that beautiful? And as this keeps cooking, those flavors, they will, they will just marry together and have such a unique, delicious flavor. And again, like I said, you put it in your jars, your canning jars. Let me show you this. Linda, could you get me one of the small size, please? This is the ball company and these are the pint size. You can get wide mouth that are real wide. That's um, very easy to fill. You can get pints, half pints, fourth of a pint. And some of those are nice because this is the time of the year to be thinking, thanks Andy. This is the time of the year to be thinking, again, this is the small size. And the lids for all these different sizes are uniform and they fit, fits there or it fits on the larger one. If you're intimidated by canning, please don't be. We're giving you some recipes on these particular harvest programs that's very easy to do. And uh, I think you should try it because Christmas is coming and you wanna make a little gift basket. These are perfect for that. You can put a little jar of corn relish, little jar of hot pepper jelly, little jar of tomato preserves or anything else that you've canned and put that in with some, some crackers or whatever. You have a wonderful gift, a welcome gift for someone in the neighborhood or whatever. Those are the little things that count. That's what makes a neighbor a real neighbor. So don't forget, you want to um, be sure that this cooks 15 minutes and then you're going to can it according to the instructions on the label of the jar company that, uh, that you're, you've purchased the jars from. All right, let's take a look. Wow. This looks so good. Look at that. There's our chicken, rice, corn, salsa. The only thing missing from this is everything from Mexico has to have one thing on it and that's cheese. So that's the last 
article that we're going to be putting on. Here's our cheese right on top. You need to fluff this with a fork like I just did or with a spoon and then put your cheese on top. There's supper. Quick and easy and oh so delicious. Corn, one of the staples. Do you realize how many people in the world that corn, it's kind of like rice, is a main ingredient in their lives because it's so uh, plentiful, the supply is great. There's so, so many varied ways that you can prepare it. Today we've done a corn pudding, the Mexican chicken and rice, and showed you how to do this wonderful corn relish. And these are just three simple little ways to use up that wonderful corn besides, don't forget, just enjoying a big buttered ear of corn. What else could you want? Well, stay tuned now. We'll be back in just a moment. Here's how you can get the recipes that you've seen presented today on at home. Thank you. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, here we are at the final uh, moments of the program and I hope that you've enjoyed today talking about corn and the preparation of it. Let's take a look at what we've prepared, okay? Here in the front is our Mexican chicken and rice. Doesn't that look good? Add a little extra sauce on the ends for people that like a little bit more. That would warm up wonderfully. That would hold well if you have a family that's coming in at different times of the evening for their meal. You wanna try that. And, and, you know, use a little uh, ingenuity. Put some hot peppers in there if you want to, or whatever. You know, just spice it up any way you want to. Next, this is our corn relish. Here's our corn relish that we made today. And, of course, you can it, like I've showed you before. Please, this is what it looks like. This is so neat to have on your canning shelf in, your, in the basement or in a nice, cool place so that you can give that as a gift when it comes Somebody that needs um, just a cheering up maybe and make a little basket for them and put some of your corn relish there. And next to it, this is our corn pudding. Now I'll tell you what, this one's set up. You can tell that it's set up. Doesn't it look good? I can't wait to get a taste of it. Does that look good or what? Yes, corn pudding with a little flavor of peppers and onions in it, something a little bit different. By all means, be sure that you get that corn. By all means, you know, this is the time of the year to enjoy it. Also, you can prepare it in packages and put it in your freezer. Lots of ways to prepare corn. Get some cookbooks and start looking through them and, and ask people. If you know someone who's maybe given you a little gift jar of um, a corn relish or something, ask them how they did it. They'll share their recipe, usually they do. And then that's how we perpetuate recipes and we keep them going for years and years and years. Everybody tells me a sad story about a wonderful recipe for chow chow or something that their Aunt Minnie used to make, but nobody bothered to get the recipe. You be that one that does it and then everybody's gonna wanna have your chow chow or your corn relish or whatever it is. But anyway, we're always glad when you drop by at home because it's a very special time and I hope you've enjoyed it today. So get out there and get that dozen of corn, okay? And be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, Pennsylvania. Appliances provided by Decor Distinctive Appliances, a reflection of your good taste. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.